Welcome to In the Studio. I'm your host, Clarice Shaley. Today we are speaking with student admissions representative, Jane Stormer, about her travels internationally. Thanks for being with us today, Jane. Thanks for having me. So, you travel all around the world for the college. Tell us about your job and why you're on the road so much. Well, um, so through the Office of Admission and Financial Aid, uh, admission counselors like me, uh, go out and meet with students so that they make sure they know about Hanover College and if it will be a good fit for them. Um, you may have met your admission counselor at your high school um, your senior year, um, but we basically go out and find students that are going to be future Panthers um, and help them through the whole process. And um, some of the students that have um, the biggest burdens in finding us are the ones that are furthest away. So my role as the international admission counselor is to actually go out and find them. <laughs> That's awesome. So I travel the world. Um, I identify countries where there might be lots of students who are interested in studying in the United States. And I go visit them. I help them with the application process. I get them started even with the student visa process wow. and help get them here. So there's a lot of details to it, but it's a lot of fun and it does involve a lot of travel. Wow. And your most recent trip was to Japan. So tell us a little bit about what you saw in Tokyo. Oh man, Tokyo is a great city. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't really imagine a more different place from Hanover than Tokyo. Um, there's over 30 million people in this city. Oh wow. And it's just skyscrapers everywhere. <laughs> and it's, it's amazing. There's just tons of amazing things. You can get on the subway and get off on a stop and go up to the street and see something amazing every time. So um, it's really fun. I, um, this time I actually got to see the cherry blossoms because I was there at the end of March. And I actually had bought a card while I was there that shows oh, the cherry blossoms. That's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and they were they were gorgeous. There were a lot of tourists there, but um, all of the the locals in Tokyo were just as excited about the cherry blossoms as Aww. as all the tourists were. So that's great. Yeah. And uh, where is the most unusual place that you've been in your travels? Mm. It was interesting for me because for Hanover, I have been to eleven different countries so far. Um, and unusual is an interesting word. <laughs> um, you could say like this fall I was in Ecuador and I got to go stand on the equator. That oh was really goodness. cool. Um, and now that I travel the world for work, I, I have to really kind of try a lot harder on vacations. <laughs> so <laughs> when I go on vacation, I usually try to pick an interesting place that's maybe different from the places I travel for work. So um, this winter I went to Iceland for, for fun and I like swam in between the continental shelves, which was really interesting oh and goodness. unique. That was a really cool thing. So Wow, so you'd say your, your job kind of makes it so that you want to travel even more mm -hmm. even though you travel for your job? Yep. Wow. It's kind of, it's <laughs> contagious. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Yeah. Um, so tell us about maybe the scariest moment you've had mm -hmm. on your trips. Yeah. On one of your trips. Yeah. Well, those can happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, you always run into interesting situations where you have to problem solve and, and figure things out. Um, I was, uh, before I went to Japan uh, just last week, I was in Korea. Um, which is a super safe place to be. <laughs> but I ended up in a cab <laughs> that got pulled over by the police for breaking traffic laws. Oh no! <laughs> so it was, it was a little scary because I didn't really know what was going on very well and the police were there. <laughs> but it all got sorted out and I made it on time oh. to my appointment. Okay. So. <laughs> good, good. Yeah. And what is the most memorable moment of one of your trips? Hmm. Oh my Other God. than being stopped by the police. Other than being stopped <laughs> by the police. Um, well, oh goodness, there's lots of memorable moments, a um, lot of impressions you get. Um, I was in China before I was in Korea, and I met with hundreds of students while I was there. Um, so you'll have little individual meetings that will like keep popping into your head. 
and you get excited about the students you meet and you hope you see them back on campus so yeah. that they can join your community because uh, hearing their stories and their interests, um, I, love, I love those memories. Yeah. Um, I also, um, on my trip in Japan, I had a really memorable experience. Um, uh, I, had, I took a few days off after I was done working because it was my birthday <laughs> and I didn't want to <laughs> fly home on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been fun. Oh. Um, so I kind of took a couple vacation days and um, I went and visited the Imperial Palace grounds in oh. Tokyo. Um, and I wanted to go there because my grandfather had visited there before during World War II, um, after V-Day, he was in the Navy and his ship landed in Tokyo. Um, and he hadn't seen grass in, I don't remember if it was like years, <laughs> but it was definitely months because he had been in the South Pacific for a long time in the war. And so when he saw the grass at the Imperial Palace, he went and just rolled in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a favorite family story. Aww. So I went and like checked out the grass and sat down I didn't roll in yeah, it, roll it. Oh, <laughs> but I did find like a four leaf clover while I was sitting there and I was like, it made me think of my grandfather. So Sign. yes, it That's was very awesome. memorable. Aww. And do you have any travel tips that yeah. you'd like to share with us? Absolutely. Um, as a student at Hanover, when I was a student at Hanover, I did study abroad twice and I, I do highly suggest um, maybe brushing up on some of the basics of the language wherever you travel. <laughs> um, it's a lot easier now um, because you can get things like Google Translate on your phone and you can download different languages so you always have it on hand um, and that's super helpful. Um, and it's also good to know if the countries you're traveling to have things like Lyft or Uber or not mm -hmm. and if <laughs> not uh, to try to research in advance of what the best ways to get around might be. Because um, getting places is always usually the most challenging thing. Um, and then, of course, um, making sure you have some way to communicate with home. <laughs> uh, I have a great phone plan. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so make sure you're set for that when you're traveling so that you can make sure to communicate with everybody and so you can share your adventures on social media and all of that, I think, is, is always a good tip to have. And also, weigh your bags before you go to the airport. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> and um, always pack uh, less than you think you need because um, you're going to want to bring things home. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. And what is one place you haven't been that you really want to go and visit mm -hmm. and why? Well, I really want to visit India. Ooh. Yeah. I know that there's a lot of students in India that want to study in the United States. Um, and I'm really working on um, figuring out the best way to access students in India. Um, so I'm hoping that maybe in the fall I'll be going there after I do more research. Ooh. And do you have any stories that you'd like to share with us other than the ones you've shared today? Oh. I know you have some stuff that you brought. Oh yeah, I'd like I do. to show those. <laughs> sure. Well, one thing I like to do um, when I travel, I always bring gifts. So this may be another travel tip. Um, but this is a a print that I made um, in a lot of cultures. Um, there's kind of this expectation that if you're going to visit somewhere, you bring a gift. Oh, um, okay. So I always make something uh, about Hanover College, since I'm usually traveling on Hanover's behalf, uh, to give away to the different counselors I meet that are hosting us, um, so that I can be, um, you know, kind of in accordance with cultural norms. <laughs> um, and also so they have something memorable to, to have from Hanover. And I make sure my card's in the back too. <laughs> so yeah, so that's one thing I do. And I make a new one for each trip. Um, and I also, I brought a lizard. Um, I, I really love pattern. I was an art major at Hanover. <laughs> so I, um, I really appreciate things that are patterned. And so I love seeing all the patterns from different cultures. Um, and this in particular was from Indonesia. Um, so my house is very decorated. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, speaking of gifts, um, this was actually from a school because usually if you bring a gift, they also have a gift. Oh. Got a nice bookmark. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes. I love that. And 
Of course, I love little cultural items like fans. Ooh. I actually have two fans here. This one is from Japan and this one is from Ecuador. So I am ready for summer. Would you like to borrow one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I also I love have the colors. That's so pretty. Yeah. Is this this is handmade too, right? Yes, yes. Wow. Ecuador is really famous for um, their weaving. They're known for their Panama hats. Oh. You might think that yeah. they're made in Panama, but they're made in Ecuador. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this uh, is more weaving cloth from Ecuador. Oh, I love that. They have really great patterns and designs. Uh, great cultural artifacts that are woven Pot. in there. Yeah. And then I got this in Ghana, Africa. Ooh. I really loved um, the culture there. And I found this beautiful painting in a city called Cape Coast. Um, <laughs> and um, you would see women everywhere carrying different wares right on their head. And it was such an amazing talent. And I was really <laughs> drawn to this painting because it was amazing how strong the women were, all of them in Africa. Yeah. They were just amazingly strong in a lot of ways. So, thank you. Well, thank you for coming and sharing all of your artifacts that you've collected on your trips. Yes, thanks for having me. Yeah, and after the break, we will be back to speak with Rick Lostetter, the chair of the art department. Be, right, be back in a moment. The Hanover College community is kind of like this interactive, fun, build your own experience. The Hanover community is everything you could want out of a college experience. Fun, exciting, spunky, vibrant, tight knit, colorful. <laughs> There's plenty to do outside of the classroom, in the athletic department, music department. There's things to do with theater. It's all there. My biggest growing experience at Hanover has just been getting to know people who see the world completely differently than I do, but who love me for who I am and who want what's best for everybody. We are really lucky to have this beautiful space that we live in. We are back with Rick Lostetter, Chair of the Art Department. Welcome, Rick. Thank you for having me. And you are kind of a jack-of-all-trades artist and graphic designer. What influenced you to get into a career in art? Uh, from a very early age, when I was really young, I had an interest in becoming an animator. And I really liked to draw, and I spent a lot of time kind of creating things, whether they were three-dimensional things, but kind of tinkering around with different types of materials and just had a general creative sense and um, didn't really know that I wanted to be an artist. Uh, I didn't really take any art classes in high school and I got to college and um, was on a track that my parents really wanted me to, to follow, being an accountant. Uh, and yeah. with a creative <laughs> mind that was really kind of torture. So. After a couple of years of that, I started introducing art courses into my curriculum mm -hmm. and uh, discovered that, it, one, I really enjoyed it, and two, I, was, um, I had an affinity for it. So I convinced them to let me change my major, and it's taken off since, ever since then. So. Good, good for you. And how did you end up coming to Hanover College? Wow, that's a really interesting path. Um, <laughs> I've had a career as a, as a professional artist and designer for 32 years. I've lived on both coasts in wow. the United States, and I've worked for all different types of companies. I um, am traditionally more of a graphic designer than a fine artist right now, although I do um, create fine art. Um, but professionally, as, a, as an artist, I've been more of a graphic designer, and I've worked for companies 
all over the country, but uh, I went to California to work for Apple Computer. Really? And I got an opportunity at a time when technology was really taking off in Silicon Valley. I got, a, I got an opportunity to work with a lot of great companies and hone skills and a lot of different types of design. And um, then my parents moved to Madison, Indiana. Mm -hmm. um, they were kind of from this area. And I was familiar with Hanover College because my father graduated from Hanover. He played oh. basketball here in the 19, early 1960s. And he hadn't talked about it a whole lot, but I was familiar with the college. And um, I was starting my family out in California. I had two young daughters. And we decided it was important for them to know their grandparents. So we moved to be closer to them. And we moved my business at that point. I had my own business there in California. We moved it to uh, Indiana, because mm -hmm. we figured what we do, we can do from anywhere. <laughs> and I continued to work on my own here for about seven years after we, we landed in Madison. And then an opportunity came up at Hanover College um, to work in administration. So I, was, uh, I interviewed and was hired to be the art director here. And that meant that I was producing, designing and producing a lot of the external publications that they do, the alumni magazine and um, publications f uh, that support the arts in terms of music, theater, um, really anything that was other than admissions. Mm -hmm. And I did that for eight years. And about five years ago, I got the opportunity to teach. Um, the art department uh, on the academic side approached me and said, we would like to add um, or we're thinking about adding design to the mix of studio art. And so they asked me, you know, what would I do to create some curriculum for that type of a course? And I guess it was about four and a half years ago I started teaching and that one course and loved it. Never really thought of myself as an educator necessarily. I mean, I taught on and off in my career, um, continuing education. I taught at some colleges in California. Um, but it was one class here or there, and absolutely loved it. Having more access to students, um, being a part of kind of developing who they are as a student and for their future, what they want to be as artists. And um, then here in the last year, the, uh, the chair of the department resigned from Hanover College, and I got the opportunity to interview. And that was a huge change for me mm -hmm. to go from doing that part-time and really being an active artist and designer every day to switching gears and becoming just an educator and and that's what I'm doing now I'm now the, the chair of the department awesome yeah and going off of that uh, what is your vision for rebuilding the program as the head of the department now well I wouldn't actually call it rebuilding um, my vision is to grow on the foundation that was created before me. There's been a lot of great educators here in the art department and a, and a rich history of teaching art. Mm -hmm. But now that we are art and design rather than just studio art, I want to enhance the opportunities for students to expand on the design uh, elements of their education. And part of that is collaborating with other disciplines and other programs here on campus, whether it be computer science, engineering. Um, Hanover has declared that we're not just moving in a STEM direction for, for engineering, but a STEAM direction. So that extra A in there is the art aspect of it, which completely goes back to my um, experiences in California working with uh, different high-tech companies in learning how to um, work in an interdisciplinary way so that you're working with people from other disciplines that they have um, expertise in, in a whole lot of um, areas and they can bring that to the table for problem solving. So that's really exciting. Um, there's some other things on the horizon that I think will really enhance opportunities for students to be um, more engaged in the design aspect of it. But I don't want to leave behind the traditional uh, art education and studio art um, disciplines like uh, drawing and painting and printmaking and photography. Those are all I incredible elements that will um, give these students a rich experience of you know, going out into the world and having um, a whole lot of skills that they can um, give them more opportunity for jobs and for amazing careers. Mm -hmm. the, um, 
the side of it in terms of the studio art, you know, I was trained as a traditional artist. Even though my concentration was in graphic design, I have minors in photography and printmaking and sculpture, so I see the benefits of those things and those mm -hmm. teach you the, the fundamental elements that you need in order to make decisions as an artist and as, as a designer. And I think, you know, that's imperative that these students have that same experience. Awesome. And tell us about some of the projects you already have accomplished this year. Wow. We, well, we've <laughs> done a kind of a visual upgrade to uh, the facilities that we have. So when I came in right away, uh, the, the building at the Center for Fine Arts is, um, you know, the building dates back to 1970. And so the style of the architecture really lends itself to that and not so much being a creative space. So that at times that can be a little bit um, stifling for an artist, you know, to go into a building that it's not inspiring you, you know, to be more creative, you kind of have to overcome that. So we put a lot of paint on the walls and a lot of paint on the doors. And the paint that we're putting on there is, um, some, of our, some of it is murals, some of it is uh, graphic enhancements that educate about some elements of art and design. Um, but the color palette has definitely changed. There's lots of reds and oranges and blues and greens and, you know, the, the foundational primary colors that all color comes from so that when the students came into the building back in September, I wanted them to see an immediate change. And, you know, a lot of what I heard is, am I in the CFA building? Where am <laughs> I? You know, this isn't the, the building I left last um, last May when I went home for the summer. So <laughs> that, that was important to me. Other than that, we've been able to add some equipment. I built equipment that could be used for silk screen printing. So the, the printmaking class, they're getting an opportunity to do a whole new type of printmaking they've never done before. Um, we have things coming here in the very near future with uh, the ceramics department. Um, where we're going to have an opportunity for the students to, to possibly help build an outdoor kiln where mm -hmm. they're firing their work in a whole new way, you know, outside of the electric kilns that we have in there wow. in that space. So um, a whole lot of plans. Some workshops are in the, in, the, uh, in the planning stages to do some stained glass work. Um, we've done book making workshops this last year. So a lot of ideas. I need more time and, you know, of course, time and money is everything, <laughs> but, uh, but time is especially. And, you know, I plan on being here a long time, so I'll have time to implement these things as we evolve in the program. Yeah, and I, I like all of the big ideas anyways. Like, I, they're going to, I feel like you're going to make them happen. I'm going to keep everybody busy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, what's on the slate for next year then, I guess? Well, I, I mentioned the ceramics, mm -hmm. so that's important because we haven't had ceramics for a couple years here. Oh. And so that class filled up incredibly fast. Uh, one of the changes for the photography classes that we teach is we're looking into purchasing cameras uh, where the students will check them out for the semester. So everybody's working from the same equipment. Mm -hmm. That is a little bit selfish on my part because it's a lot easier to teach, you know, when you're going to, to look at the different um, ways to manipulate the tools that you're using, everybody's working from the same tool rather than everybody having different cameras. So that's really exciting because I, I, it will give me an opportunity then to bring people, bring the entire class of students along at the same time and at the same speed. Um, we're reopening the Hanover Gallery next year. It's mm -hmm. been, not that it's been closed this year, but we're bringing in outside artists uh, specifically next year. So we're opening with a show in the fall of some Japanese prints that have been given to us on loan from Arvin Sango, which is a, a manufacturing company here in Madison. And we're really excited about that because it's, uh, it's watercolors and different types and styles of printmaking that we do teach here. Uh, but coming from a different culture, it has a different sensibility to it. So, yeah, so you know, cool. having access access to that here in uh, Hanover, Indiana, is really exciting. And then we have some um, regional artists and some artists that I'm looking at to come in from a long distance to to really enhance what the students are exposed to in terms of art, so that they can see there's all different ways of creating art and different types of art they can create. Okay, cool. And is there anything else you'd like to tell us about yourself or the art department? Well, I would say in terms of the art department, 
my challenge to Hanover students is, uh, you know, I know there's a requirement for some type of artistic class that they need to take, but try something different that, that you're not sure you you might be any good at. You might discover something that you have a love for the rest of your life to uh, to continue to explore that medium. And you know, there's a lot of variety of different types of courses that we offer, so uh, we have something for everybody. Yeah. And we gain from students from other disciplines coming in and taking those courses. It challenges my my majors to work harder and to um, and to also share their knowledge and their experience with somebody else. It, it, we all benefit from art, so the more we can expound and expand on what uh, types of art we're, um, we work in, that's better for everybody. Yeah, and I'm actually in one of the ceramic classes, so awesome. I'm super excited for well, that. Well, it's going to be great. <laughs> this this uh, faculty member that I have coming in, he's going to really uh, t turn our program on its ear. He's really okay. exciting, and he can't wait to get here, so uh, that, that'll be great. Uh, I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for being with us today. Absolutely, thanks for having me. And this brings us to the end of the episode of In the Studio. We would like to give special thanks to Jane Stormer and Rick Lostetter for coming in today. I'm Clarice Shaley. Thanks for watching.